Welcome. Hello. Um, I'm Juliet Wolf Robin. I'm the National Executive Director of American Photographic Artists. APA is a not for profit trade association of professional photographers, mainly those who are working in editorial and advertising industries. And we, um, a few years back, started a diversity committee, which is focused on conversations um, around diversity and inclusion. And Jill Broussard is here today, and she is moderating the conversation that we are having this month. Um, if you're interested in watching past episodes of Scope, you can go to American Photographic Artist YouTube channel, and we have uh, the recordings of the various conversations there. Um, you can also check out on apanational.org. You can find the upcoming events, upcoming episodes of Scope. Uh, come join us, join our organization. We're always looking for new members and people to participate in the conversation. And we also have an area for members to have, continue the conversation online at our new connected community. So be sure to check that out. And if you have questions, we will be available. So I'm going to pass it over to Jill and she will introduce you to today's speakers. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Juliet. And we are so excited to have all three of these special ladies with us. Um, first, we have Kelly Montez of Apostrophe Reps. And uh, we are also including Yasara, and you've got to tell me how to pronounce your last name. Okay. I usually <laughs> teach people, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but it's going to bar the D. I'm sorry. The D is a TH. The W is a V. We should have practiced. Yasara Gunavardhana. We had all that time to practice. And that's I not know. I'm sorry. I didn't think about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we've got Nicole Morrison. And um, so we'll go ahead and open up the program. And Kelly, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about the AMP program and how it got started. Sure. Um, the AMP program was born in 2020 during the social justice mm -hmm. movement. Um, I'm sorry if that was me pinging. I thought that I had shut the, all of my notifications off there. Let me do that now really quickly. Apologies. Um, it, and really, like so many other people, the team was deeply affected by the murder of George Floyd. And we got together and as a team, we're trying to brainstorm what we could do besides just screaming into Instagram. And it was a really pivotal moment. Um, and I have to thank actually Julia McGuire, who's our VP of business development, who came up with the idea of a mentorship program. Um, and the moment she said that, we just started pinging around ideas of what we would love photographers to know about the business of photography. Um, not teaching the creative behind it, but what do people really need to know in order to be better entrepreneurs in this industry? And um, we put it together within a week. Uh, Darnell Scott, who is our visual brand director, came up with all of the visuals. The team and I scoped out what the class was going to be. And like that, we launched the, the applications. Excellent. And how many iterations of the, of the AMP program have there been at this point? So we're actually going on to our fourth round um, and we're getting ready to announce who the mentees are going to be um, at the end of this month, beginning of June. We had, just in case anyone listening did apply, we had close to 300 applications and we really take the time to review all of the PDFs and applications multiple times over in order to try to narrow down. This year, the team and I are having a really hard look at how many people we can take and it, we may only have enough room for eight mentees. 
Yeah, that's hard, but we really want to, and then of course, Yassara and Nicole can speak to this, but we really want to be able to show up and truly be hands-on with each one of the mentees. Um, that's so important to us. You know, when you commit to being a mentor to somebody, showing up and being there and guiding them is, is really, really crucial. Um, and the program is pretty lengthy and pretty hands-on. Yeah. Like, so, so you've got, you know, several folks in the apostrophe office, but you're like, Hey, Hey team, we're going to, we're going to do this. And now we'd, we'd like for everybody to, to take on this extra commitment. Like how much time are folks spending working on this program between the, the actual one-on-ones and, and the curriculum and the reviewing and all the stuff in between? Sure. Well, would you like me to give you a little bit of detail about what the program consists of? Okay. Yeah, please do. So at this point in time, there are multiple segments to the program. The core of the program consists of 12 weeks of coursework. And so we do a Zoom meeting with all of our mentees so that we they can be anywhere in the country. And we actually have some international applicants as well. Um, but those Zoom meetings is meeting once a week for an hour and a half to two hours. And that we have scheduled out. We start with talking about your brand as a photographer, um, talking about the visuals of your business and how it aligns to your brand. And then we dive in deeper into how do you create a PDF portfolio, how you estimate a job, how you read a purchase order, we have a finance class, and then we also have some other guest speakers that come in. Um, we have some BIPOC photographers that come and speak to their experiences of how they got started in the business. We bring in some clients as well to talk about how you promote to them, what they look for in artists as well. And then over the course of the 12-week program, we work with each one of the mentees to create a editorial treatment um, that apostrophe gives the mentees a few thousand dollars to help them create personal work. Mm -hmm. And then we take that personal work and put it into a digital magazine that we then promote out to all of our clients. So that's another segment, creating that personal work and doing the digital magazine. We also work with the mentees throughout the course to develop a digital portfolio. And then we set them up on dates with somewhere between three to six clients, uh, depending on the mentee's availability to pitch their work back out to the clients as well. So I, I wanna pivot over to Yasara since you were part of the first class. So out of all those things, I wanna know like, what was the thing that got you excited? Why were you like, this is the program I wanna apply to? Why did you, why did you jump in on this? Um, so it sounds like there have been some changes, which is really exciting. Um, <laughs> so cool that there's a stipend because that was something that our first round did not have. So yeah. that was something, um, there was a lot of things like we were encouraged to like reach out to so and so like we'll try our best to help connect you to a shooting space or things like that. But ultimately it did fall on us to cover the cost of the editorial, which we all knew it going in. Um, and we all expected that. So cool that it's something that you guys are doing now. Um, but for me, the real draw was um, I had come um, from a back, like I went to school, um, I went to Art Center College of Design for Photography. I finished in April 2018. And then the plan was always to assist first. And so 2020 was the year that I was like, I'm going to stop assisting. I'm going to start shooting. And we all know what happened in 2020. Um, and part of like the stagnation from the COVID pandemic was me feeling very much like this isn't the time. No one's going to want to hire anyone new. No one's going to, you know, you go with who you trust. It's not a time for new and um, emerging artists. Um, but um, Jimmy Marble had posted on Instagram sharing the AMP flyer. And um, I saved that, kind of forgot about it and was very, very like a few days before um, somebody that I knew just through kind of Instagram and a couple meetings in real life messaged me and was like, I'm applying for this. I think you should apply for it too. Um, and we both got in. That person was Janelle Fong, incredible photographer, very close friend um, through this program. 
Um, and so for me, it was just like all the stuff that I felt like I didn't feel like I knew on my own or could kind of hold myself accountable um, to like reach out to people, have the practice of speed dating, um, build a community. Like I really didn't realize how much I was missing um, a BIPOC community. I really did not know that many POC photographers. Um, and it was a massive deal to like be surrounded, you know, virtually surrounded by people that I could have different conversations that I wasn't having before. Um, so that was a really big draw for me. Um, and then again, every, like all of like the professional things to take away from, like it was such a valuable resource at that time. And there's still things that I'm taking from it. And we added the stipend in part because of the feedback that we got from the mentees. You know, we're always telling our photographers, you have to test, you have to give us new work. Um, I don't, I don't think we always think about the extreme cost of entry into this industry and I'm working, typically I'm signing people at a certain level in their career. And one of the mentees after the fact, and we asked for feedback and he was like, it was the pandemic. It was really hard for me. And I was like, wow, why didn't I think of that? I mean, apostrophe is a small business, but we still have resources that, that we can give. So we've been trying to set aside more money every year to try and help the AMP program. Nicole, what about you? What was um, what were a few of the draws, and how did you find out about the program? And actually, uh, Yasara, you gave us a little bit of your background. Nicole, will you share a little bit about you? Yeah. Um, so, the first year that I really started getting into commercial photography was 2019, and I was doing like all of these small jobs. I actually just looked back on what I was doing and I couldn't, can't believe what I was doing for what I was doing it for. It's crazy. Um, but, um, you know, doing a lot of small jobs. I used to be a wedding photographer and I had been doing that for years. And um, I just always craved more control. I've always loved food. I've always loved color. And so I just started moving in that direction 2019. And then 2020 happens. Um, and then in the summer of 2020, there was just like a sudden demand for black photographers and people were reaching out to me a bunch. And I just was like trying to take the opportunities as they came and navigating the feelings of like, oh, people are contacting me because I'm black. Does it have to do with my work? Like, you know, that kind of thing, which, you know, I was able to navigate, but it was a very strange time to like, be in a pandemic, all my friends are still on unemployment. I'm so busy and I'm doing all this different stuff. And I, and I, some of it was a fit, some of it wasn't. Um, and then in 2021, someone posted it in their stories. And I don't even remember who it was at this point, um, but someone posted it in the stories. And there had been a lot of offerings since the summer of 2021 of like reps or other photographers being like, hey, if you want to do a portfolio review for free or, you know, informational meeting, whatever, um, you know, apply here. So I applied to all the stuff that was free and wanted to meet as many people as possible and, and just connect and, and have my work seen and, and ask questions if that was available to me. And so when I saw the AMP um, post, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, this sounds great. I, you know, I'm trying to think about where I'm going and how to get there. And you, you just spend all this time piecemealing all these things. And you're like, I think this is what people are doing. I think this is how this goes. And then you just like, you know, ask a bunch of people and go to APA meetings or, you know, other things like that. Um, and I think, I, I don't really think I knew how structured and like how much there was to it. And it's possible I might not have even applied because I would have had imposter syndrome. Um, <laughs> But then actually someone from Apostrophe reached out to me for a meeting. Um, and so I had a call with her, um, Lauren, and she was so great. And she it was kind of like, where are you at? Ask me anything you want. And I said, 
oh, I'm so happy you reached out to me. I was just going to apply for the mentorship program. And she was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, you know, we're, we've already done one round. We're so excited about it. You know, we love doing it and all that stuff. And so, you know, I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to apply now. Um, and it, I mean, there was no reason not to, honestly. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Did I answer all the questions? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I was curious, you know, so you guys are, are both applying for this program and it's, it's all remote. How, you know, we were all kind of learning in 2020 how to do Zooms because, you know, that was the point when nobody could, nobody, all of a sudden, you know, nobody was in person. So we were all learning how to do that. How was it to be on the cusp of this community, but everybody's remote? Did that make it more difficult to be part of the program? Did that make it easier? How, how did, and, and you too, Kelly, because you were learning just like I was, you know, what, what was remote? What was it like? I, I mean, I, I think because of Zoom, we were able to do the program. Yeah. I feel like all of the rounds have definitely created community, but Yasara's <laughs> ability to build community, I'd love for you to speak to that. And the round oh. very supplementary <laughs> group. Do you tell. It sounds like there's a story here. Um, I don't know if there's a story, but I think that like coming into it, knowing that it was going to be virtual, I was just like, I got, we got to have fun. Like if we're going to be on the screen. We might as well have a good time. So I would, I don't know. I feel like I'll come in like waving on whatever. Um, and just like something um, we briefly started talking about, like it's really important for me, like my personality in person and online for it to be the same and for it to be like shown through, like for me to be able to be like, this is who I am. This is what I'm like. I'm someone that like, I want to do a good job and I want to have fun. And like, what's the point if we're not doing both of those things? And so for round one, I feel like it took us like probably a little while to get warmed up. Obviously it is a, a brand, brand new thing. Um, but I even remember my interview with Kelly, like um, when we were, when they're finalizing, I remember feeling so comfortable instantly and just like being myself, having a conversation and being like, no matter what happens, I just had such a great time with Kelly. That was so fun. And so going into it, just continuing to have fun and like have a personality, you know, like just as if, as if we're all hanging out, just like try and do that over Zoom. Um, and I think honestly, like it was, a, it took time again, but like towards the end, we're all warmed up and we're all being a little silly here and there. Um, but we weren't necessarily like speaking off of the meetings. Like we, I think we had followed each other, like most of us followed each other on Instagram, but it wasn't that we were like having active conversation and um, my, my friend Janelle Fong, who did the program with me, we would start to like call each other at the end of every meeting and like talk about what happened. And the couple, a couple weeks um, before we were finishing, we were getting ready for speed dating. And we were like, why aren't we talking to everybody else? Like, why are we just FaceTiming? Like, why don't we just start talking to everybody else? And so I think that I started, we both started messaging people being like, hey, like, would you be okay if we like, had like a WhatsApp with everybody, like, can we get each other in a group chat? And like, why don't we do speed dating tests with everybody? Um, and like, everybody, like, what's your availabilities? What's your schedules? And so we started like planning and organizing. So like the people in New York, we had some Florida, we had a Denver. And so I think everybody essentially like met with each other one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we were realizing, oh, actually, you know what? I think first we did in the program, we did, um, I think we had like two people and one mentor maybe did like a practice speed dating thing. So oh, while we were speed. waiting for, yeah, oh, I was like, you might want speed dating. give us the, give us the, cause oh. I don't know anything about this. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, speed dating in the sense was like, um, uh, Apostrophe organized for us to meet with industry folk, whether those be like creative producers, art directors, art buyers, all of that. Um, and so that's an opportunity for us to show our portfolio, talk about what we do and try and pitch ourselves in general and just get the practice of meeting these people and keeping these contacts. And so um, I believe, I can't, I can't really remember a while ago, um, if it was either mentees, like, because we also had mentors who were uh, photographers that were repped by apostrophe. 
So I think that it was the practice of meeting with those mentors before we did speed dating. And so we would be in a Zoom room with one other mentee and one mentor. And it wasn't until like we're waiting for the mentor to come and it's just the two mentees. And then we start talking being like, wait, this is like the first time that we're talking one-on-one. That's a little crazy. Like we have a couple of weeks left. And then became like, why don't we plan to like meet with everybody? So then for me, that was how I really got to talk to people. Um, and then after that, um, I'm a Los Angeles based photographer. I think two people were moving to Los Angeles like two weeks later. And so there was a bigger group of Los Angeles photographers. And um, I think to like kind of close off apostrophe, they asked for like headshots of everybody. So we were like, why don't we get together and take each other's headshots? Um, and so we all met up at Naomi's place and we all met in person for the first time. And that was really great. And uh, lucky to say that, like, I still consider those people my friends and I still see them uh, as often as possible. And that is, that is my Zoom community to outside mm-hmm. community experience. I love it. And, and Nicole, what about you? So you were in the second iteration. Was it mm-hmm. a little easier to, to start right off the bat or did it take a little while to warm up with your fellow photographers? I mean, by that point, Zoom was old hat. Like it was very easy to just jump right in. Um, and I'm always kind of like open with my personality as well. And yeah, there's like, why would we do what we're doing and not have fun and take it too seriously? It doesn't make sense. Um, but I, one thing I do remember hearing about was how well the first group had gelled and, and clicked and stayed connected with each other. That didn't really happen for us. Um, I was the only photographer at the time who was in California at all. Most everyone was in New York. Um, I think there were like 17 or 18 of us that ranked. And so there were a lot of us, but most people were in New York. And then some, a few people were somewhere in between. Um, but there's only really one person that I connected with, like in an ongoing way where we're like, you know, I mean, we're always DMing each other on Instagram and rooting for each other and stuff. Um, but she's really the only person that like, will jump on a zoom every once in a while and be like, let's do a download. What's going on with you? How are things going? How's work? How's life? Um, you know, what's going on, but I wouldn't say that we gelled as a group, although we were all super friendly and like supportive of each other. And we did start a slack, but it just never really took off. Um, we mostly used it around the time that we were doing our editing. Tutorials and we were kind of trying to figure out to the point earlier of like, how are you guys doing this? How are you paying for it? Where are you going? Who's like, are people volunteering to work with you? Are you offering to pay people, stylists, you know, to work with you? Are you having to pay for a space? Um, so we mostly used it at that time to just kind of figure out how to do that. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit different. Also, I think maybe 2020 was just you know, a wild time where people were maybe more open to connect where in 2021, I think we were all working more. Yeah. That that's the thing that we've noticed, you know, there, when, even for the first session, everyone was able to show up and be on screen and take advantage of the program. Whereas towards the end of even round one, people were getting back to assisting. I know, sorry, you were listening in for mm-hmm. the last half because you were you were assisting and the photographers you were working with were really great about you, you know, having your headphones in while you were on set. Um, but that gets to be, that's one of the things that we try to figure out how to how to navigate the best date and time for for people in order to make this program work for them. Um, I think we also found, we tried to double the size on the second set of mentees. And we just got really busy because this is something that we do in addition to our work. And I would say that it takes, you know, at the minimum two hours a week up to four or five, depending on on every apostrophe sales rep has two mentees. And then they're usually working alongside another one of their apostrophe peers. So that way the mentee has two different people that they can go to. If one person isn't available, the other person can be. If they're both available, then that's great. 
but it can be taxing in terms of time. And then when we tried to double the size, it didn't feel quite as personal on Zoom either. Um, and we learned that for that third round, we really needed to try to push the mentees to be meeting in person with one another. Like Nicole said, I think the the New York group finally started getting together and I know yes. they pass jobs to one another. Mm-hmm. This business can be so isolating and where you are just like, I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. Like, is this contract okay? Like, who do I go to? Who do I talk to? And that was something that we saw this community in round one, but not so much in round three or round two. So in round three, we were like, okay, well, maybe if we scale back even the number of people on the screen, people will be able to start feeling more comfortable to having intimate um, conversations with one another offline, as well as during the group session. So, so did you find that that did indeed help people feel more, more like they were able to contribute, you know, in a live session and did that help community building? I think so. You know, the, the photographers, and it might just be because I'm in LA, there are a few of the photographers from round three in LA that I know meet up and that like a couple of them will have a studio and they'll give it to somebody else who, who needs that, who needs that help. And they go to each other's art show. Um, and we did do an event with every, all of the mentees in New York and, and across the three different sessions, they've gotten to know one another and they do seem as though they're connecting, which is just, I feel like the, one of the biggest things that we could do is try to, to create community. So that you can just bounce ideas off of one another or ask for like, what do you think of this? How would you handle that situation? I know I have that. Um, I started also a trade organization in the pandemic, the Artist Management Association, and just having that community of reps to call up and be like, hey, what what do you think about this? Have you heard of this usage before? Whatever it is, it's just so important to have those people that you can bounce ideas off of. Yeah. Yeah. If, um, if anybody uh, doesn't already know that American photographic artists is really big on community, that was one of my saving graces in the pandemic. Um, I, I actually started with APA in the pandemic because people were having conversations around the murder of George Floyd and like, what are we doing as a, as a community? And as a, as an isolated photographer, you know, you just end up being by yourself and you don't have anyone to, you know, you don't have other photographers to call and say like, is this, am I bidding too low? Am I bidding too high? Like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Where are you getting this printed? You know, just things like that, let alone just feeling like you're not alone. And um, anyway, but APA was, was kind of the saving grace. And that's actually how I ended up on this panel, because I, I really wanted to be part of a group of like-minded individuals who were, who cared enough to do something outside of just make money in this field. Um, and, and through that, I found this amazing community of folks, you know, just like uh, Yasara's group and hopefully Nicole, you know, hopefully some of your folks will, will kind of matriculate back in, um, you know, cause you end up keeping in touch with people and then you've got resources in different cities and, and all kinds of things. And it feels, it feels so much better than it yeah. did before. Um, yeah. I started getting involved with APA, just even attending the meetings. I was on a panel in 2020. Um, Someone asked me to participate in a panel um, with a couple other black photographers. Um, And I think that's where I first met you actually. Yeah. Was was I in that panel with you? Because we did a panel together too, didn't we? We did a different, I've done a lot of panels with APA. (laughs) (laughs) Nicole's our resident Um, panelist. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so no, please be quiet. Um, yeah, so I did have, you know, I did have that going on and and maybe that's why I didn't necessarily seek it from the group because I did, I do have a good local community. Um, and so I have had people to talk to when I needed to. That's wonderful. So, um, you know, I, I did want to like kind of turn the being aware of our time and respectful of everybody. I wanted to get everybody's thoughts on where this is going to go. And I, I liked Kelly that you brought up that, you know, you, you recognize that community building is really important, maybe more so than you originally had realized. 
and that making it more of an intimate experience, having people meet in person now that now that you're capable to do that, that feels like part of the next iteration of of what's next. And I'm curious if um, if our graduates have any ideas of things that they would recommend, um, or if Kelly, if you guys are thinking about anything on tap for next season that you're going to try. Yeah, we have a, a couple of different ways in which we're trying to push the conversation further um, in order to challenge our brand and agency partners to hire and and take chances I, I, on someone new, not necessarily just because they're BIPOC, but trying a new artist out. Uh, we've, I've seen in the past, and I appreciate the loyalty that comes from brands and agency partners that they want to work with photographers that they know can deliver, especially in what appears to be a little bit of a recession. I think our industry is a little bit soft right now. And our ultimate goal is that when you have I'm a graduate of AMP on your profile of Instagram or website or whatever, it really means something that people can People who hire know that the artist has been through a program that teaches them the business side. So last year, moving into this year, we also, for our mentees who have really shown up for the program, we've been trying to push a shadowing program where a lot of these brands and ad agencies have diversity budgets. Um, and to bring on younger artists to shoot alongside or to shadow our ro on roster talent so that they really get hands on experience. And this isn't just, you know, oh, you're a PA and you're getting coffee. This is really truly hitting on the equity, inclusion, and belonging part of going through the casting with our artists, going through locations and having them talk about why they're making these recommendations to the client of shooting in that location, being on the pre-pro, standing at the monitor and hearing the feedback so that when it comes time for them to manage an 80 person set, they've seen it before. Mm -hmm. They've had that opportunity to be along for, for that journey um, and know how to navigate what some of those pitfalls might be. So a lot of times that turns into a second shooting opportunity. And in those instances, we really try to make sure that the, well, not try to, we absolutely insist that the artist gets paid for that, that work. Um, which Nicole, I think you did on a, a project for, for us, um, but trying to have, is that we hear a lot, we have a lot of interest from agency partners about who are the graduates, is there any mentees that you would recommend for this opportunity? Um, so we try to push, we try to push that along. And when we think that someone is a good fit from the mentorship program, we talk about like, okay, well, maybe we could also do this shadowing. So that's one, one, one way in which we're trying to take it a little bit further. Ladies, do you have any thoughts on if you were going to create a program of your own, or if you were going, if somebody called you and said, Hey, listen, we want to do something like this. Do you have any, any thoughts for us? Anything you would, you would create? I mean, it's such a big undertaking, even what Kelly just described, which <laughs> isn't even a mentorship program, but shadowing someone is a involved thing to try to create. I mean, you know, it's it's not only the desire to do something, but really being able to follow through and creating some kind of structure and having enough pe people being willing to, you know, be available to do it and continue to be available to do it. Um, so my advice to someone who wanted to do this, really make sure that you have the time and make sure that you have enough people to support you and to participate in doing it. Um, and I think, you know, asking for feedback along the way, I mean, I, I couldn't begin <laughs> to, 
to tell someone how to do something like this. Yeah. Agreed. And um, the only thing that I would want, and this is a very, very personal thing because I really don't know who would have the time or would relate, but I would have personally loved to like still be involved with the groups that came after oh, yeah. um, because just like we really, really briefly talked about how I was able to come in for the round two speed dating section and just like really for like, I don't know, probably 10 total minutes, just be like, hi, I'm Isara. Like, how are you? How's it been going? What's the program like for you? It was so fun for me. And I am somebody that just like loves meeting people and loves expanding my community. So me personally, I would have loved um, somehow to either like, oh, if anybody has questions with people that have done it before, like here's the SARS information, she's open and she wants to talk to you about it. Um, and like that be, like that's something that I would make the time for and would be open to have like forever. Um, but I know that there are other people in the program that like just don't have the time, maybe don't have the interest and that's fine. Um, but one of the biggest takeaways, if not the biggest takeaway from this was the community that it gave me and that has continued to build from like for the past three years. Um, and so just having that, like that's so important to me. That's such a like crucial day to day. I think that that is something I would have loved to do and would still love to do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, on a smaller scale, like people reach out to me and they say, oh, you know, I'd love to get more on that experience. Do you need an assistant? And it it's even that is tricky because it's like, OK, if I'm working with a client, a lot of times your shot list is ambitious. You have a lot of stuff to do and you need someone who knows what they're doing, but they have to have experience to get experience. And you need mm -hmm. someone who has experience. So it's like a catch 22 of like, how can I help people who are coming up? Um, during this, you know, day or days when I actually, I need to be supported. Um, something that I do is when I test, I'll have like a less experienced assistant come and they're basically shadowing me. And I'm like thinking out loud, everything I'm doing, I'm like talking through it. So they understand the decisions I'm making and why, and, you know, do you know how to use a C-stand? Are you familiar with ProPhoto? And be honest with me, um, cause I will show you. Um, and so thinking, you know, even, even that is something that you have to consider what's my capacity for this thing to give someone else experience, but also make sure that all my bases are covered. Yeah. And that's, we have been talking about the shadowing program for over a year. And I just thought it'd be a no brainer. Like people would love <laughs> to take advantage of this, but it's actually very tricky for the ad agency, especially in the time of COVID, I'm hopeful. I mean, we have, it doesn't align with the mentorship program and the, and the mentees of that program. We pitch this all the time and we pull across all three programs and apostrophe to be clear, we'll pay a first assistant day rate to a mentee. We do not expect the brand or the agency to pay that unless they want them to second shoot. Then we expect whoever the client is to pay for that. But an apostrophe, what we're, our request is if we come under on a job that we are then able to bill that line item back. But we're willing to take the risk because we think that this, this inclusion, this belonging on set is so unbelievably important. And I am hopeful that now that COVID restrictions have relaxed, clients will take us up on this more. And the idea is that we can say, this person is a mentee. They don't have all the answers. Everyone on the set knows they're there to learn because nothing's worse than that feeling of, I don't belong, that imposter syndrome that people talk about and trying to hide, trying to fake it, that, that oh, I should be here. And it, it, no one can do their best work in, in that case. But it's been a hard sell. It's been really surprising to go to somebody and say, you don't have to pay anything. I, I want, I know you want to do good and we want to do good. We'll pay for it. That's surprising. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it is and it isn't. Many, 
<laughs> I mean, and it, and yeah. it isn't. Yeah. There are so many things. I want to be very clear. I do not have the answers. We are doing our best and I am sure we are doing things wrong. I am sure there are times I'm using the wrong language. I'm sure there's times that I'm not thinking through things end to end. I do not want to come here and be like, I'm doing this and everybody else should be doing it. I'm just trying to do the best that I can. And everyone at apostrophe is trying to do the best that they can. Yep. At the same time, there are so many things that have been eye-opening to me about this industry of people saying that they want to help. And then you create an opportunity for them to help and they don't help. And there's so many times when someone will come to me with a good opportunity for a BIPOC photographer and it's not a good opportunity. They're taking advantage of them. They're taking advantage of their inexperience. They're robbing their copyright. And I will say if there is anyone who ever watches this that works at a brand or works at an ad agency, if you are like, what is one thing I can do? You can go back to your clients and you can tell them, let photographers use their work for self-promotion. So many brands never give the images back to the photographer because they handle the retouching. So many of them sign restrictive NDAs to where artists are not able to showcase and promote their work on their websites or on their Instagrams. And if you wanna help a photographer, especially someone who is coming up in this industry that may not have the same means as other people, you can let them show the work that they've produced for you. There's my soapbox. <laughs> well, I, I was going to ask be great. you, actually, if you, if, if you had, if, if you, because it, it is interesting that people do really seem like they want to help and people seem outraged that we're not further along in society sometimes, but then when given the opportunity, they're not jumping jumping to, to do something that doesn't cost them anything. Um, and I, I'm, I'm actually curious um, how, how you were so bold to decide, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to help out. I'm going to step up. I'm going to sacrifice a lot of my time and my energy. What made you so bold? Uh, I mean, the, the killing of George Floyd and what apostrophe is very diverse internally. And I didn't understand what some of my black coworkers were facing. And uh, I mean, it just felt so helpless. And I wanted to do something. And at the beginning of this year, we actually had a number of people that you know naturally just left and went on to other opportunities. And we were really down on sales rep reps. And I was like, oh my gosh, can we do this again? I just recovered from self, something, a, a health scare. I was like, can, I, can we, it takes a lot of time. And I was considering like, maybe we need to pause this for a little bit. And then the murder of Tyree Nichols happened. And I was like, nope, we have to do, we have to do this. This is good. This is really good work. And we learned so much from it. I, I can't even begin to tell you there's so many times where we're like, we'll have a promotion lesson. And we talk about all the things you should be doing and the way you should keep your LinkedIn up to date. And you should be reaching out to a couple clients a week and all those things. And I'll get off the call and I'm like, and now I got to go walk the walk because I just told a bunch <laughs> of people go do something and I'm not investing in my own business in that same way. So, and, and really just like the, the work and I'm so inspired by every class that has come through and, and, and what they teach us is huge. So we really, we really do get so, so much from it. Like it's not at the end of the day, it's not a burden. It's something that adds so much to apostrophe and now it's just become part of our DNA. Yeah. Ladies, I'm curious. Um, I'd like to know something that any of you were surprised or delighted by about this whole process. Ooh. Surprise and delight. 
Because, you know, sometimes you never really understand the gravity of what you're undertaking, you know, signing on, you know, you sorry, you mentioned that signing on to this program or, or, or probably Nicole too, you know, if you had known you might not have done it with all how much it was going to require of you or how much you were going to have to show up. And I'm, I'm curious, sometimes we don't know the arc of our own progress and it's surprising and delighting sometimes. Um, maybe I'm surprised at how, like, I how immediately it felt like, um, you were learning and you were growing and you were changing. Like there was so much to just like immediately ap apply. I remember the second class was on um, branding and having, um, I was so uninspired like before this, like I hadn't done like a personal shoot in so long. I like couldn't think of like what was interesting to me. And Darnell came in with his little branding Google slides for us. And it was, I felt so good after that class being like, whoa, there's so much to do. Like, no, no overwhelming now maybe but um at the time it was just like magical being like whoa you could do this this and this and like I'm gonna think about like what's important to me how do I want to represent myself and like second class I remember being like this is so cool this is so great I didn't know um so I think that was like a really big deal for me at the time yeah yeah I mean the biggest thing for me that I think about with this and that I couldn't have anticipated was it encouraged me to think so much bigger for myself and for my career and my potential before the program and before anyone had reached out to me from apostrophe. I was really thinking about things on a small scale. I thought it would be too nerve wracking to be the boss of like a crew of many people. And so I thought, oh, I'll just do small shoots. Maybe I'll work with one or two stylists and don't want to do anything too crazy. Um, and, you know, had had kind of resigned myself to that being my goal. And then being, you know, accepted into the program, encouraged by everyone throughout the program, I was like, oh, I can really dream a lot bigger than that. There, why not me? Why can't I have a crew of people who I'm making the decisions and I'm in charge? Why not? Why am I counting myself out of this? Um, and I don't know that I would have gotten that. I mean, that confidence would have taken a lot longer to build, right? Because I didn't come up through assisting. I didn't see how a lot of other people were working. I started by doing stuff by myself. And, you know, some of that's by necessity. It was 2020. I was, people were sending me their stuff. I was taking pictures of it in my apartment and sending them pictures, you know? So, um, reaching out to stylists, continuing to test and, and, you know, reach, realizing that like little by little, you know, a crew would feel more and more comfortable, but also just being open to that being a possibility for myself. Um, and with everyone at Apostrophe having so much knowledge and experience and working with such great artists, the fact that they were even paying 30 seconds of attention to me was like, okay, I'm taking advantage of this entire experience. Um, and even like I had two mentors, but one of them um, wasn't able to, you know, fulfill their role as a mentor. And so I just had one person. But anytime I reached out for anything, whether it was working on, I was, had an issue with my PDF and within an hour, Darnell was like, oh, let me figure out how to help you with this. And, you know, one day I was trying to, you know, think about an estimate and I reached out to, um, three people. And within an hour, I was on the phone with JP and she was giving me, you know, advice and actual numbers and yes, you're on the right track and make sure you ask for this. So, you know, I think it, there was so much willingness to share information and so much transparency that I, I, I didn't expect it. And I'm just super grateful for it, you know, now. Um, yeah. <laughs> On that note, I, I have two final questions. Um, we're, we're about to close out. And um, so the first question is, we, we learned a little bit, Nicole, that you, you like color and you like food, but I'd actually like for both of you to give us kind of your elevator pitch. Tell us a little bit, tell us what you like to shoot. Tell us what you like to create, what you're inspired by. So, so give us a little snapshot of who we are, because I'm hoping that they're maybe some buyers out there, or there may be some folks that come across this and let's tell them who you are. Give us, give us, give us a little bit of your personality 
And then I'd also like to close out with a moment of gratitude. And I'd like for both of you to share somebody that that really made a big difference in, in this process of you growing into the place where you are now. Doesn't have to be from the program, but it's always nice to, to be in gratitude about that stuff. So those are your two prompts. <laughs> um, I just blanked. Yes, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you I too. I want to, Kelly. I want to hear. I want to hear your gratitude moment as well. Oh, so, okay. I'll you can be thinking about it. Well, what I'm I'm curious actually because one of the the very first class of AMP is working. The homework is working on your elevator pitch. Yes, that's like that class good. one. So <laughs> I, I'm I knew excited to see the ladies remember <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm great. Right. So, hi, I'm Yasara. Um, no, okay, I'll do it for real. <laughs> wow, it feels so forced right now. Um, but I am a Sri Lankan American photographer based in Los Angeles. Um, I have several focuses, all things I'm very passionate about. Um, I am a food, still life product, and portrait photographer. I'm drawn to color and vibrancy in the world. Um, I love graphic elements, um, and I have a curiously observant eye. Kelly told me to say curiously observant three years ago <laughs> and I still <laughs> say it every single still time so. <laughs> because it's so true like I that was the part of like the lesson is like talk about what your experience is is what your experience is um and something that I was telling her is like I'm drawn to stories I love like being given an assignment that's very much like how would you handle this like go out and see the world and take from it and so for her that meant that I was curiously observant which again, I use all the time and like pretty much anytime anyone's asking for a little bio, I'm ending it with, uh, as you know, curiously observant. That's, That's a condensed. That's <laughs> very good. Well, tell us. Real oh, quick, and then if us. we're doing oh yeah, the gratitude, is that what you're going to ask? Well, I was also going to say, what are you inspired by? I, I want to know a little bit about oh. what you know, I, I want to hear about some of the inspirations. So when you're shooting, uh, when you're making portraits, when you're doing food, when you're doing product, what are some of the things? Give us a sense. Wow. Great question. Um, I feel like it's just finding beauty in the day to day. Like, I feel like I'm someone who I can like sit outside and be like, I don't know. I, I like, I find like the breeze beautiful. So like things like that. I love like the power that light has, like um, I just moved into space and every afternoon the sun sets and like casts this gorgeous golden light. Um, and I love to just like sit and watch that. So things like that, I think that I love to go about and I'm truly drawn to certain things. It's like a magnitude to certain things and elements. Um, so I think that helps in the storytelling. I love seeing small vignettes and being like, how can I make this interesting? Part of something else that I talked about that led to Curiously Observant is that I love to give myself like mini assignments and treat them as like little games. Um, my most recent game or self-assignment is uh, documenting trash. Um, because <laughs> when I was in New York, I was in New York in 2021. It was like the first time I spent a long amount of time there. And I was like, so confused by seeing all the trash. And I was like, why are we walking past this? No one cares. Um, and so then it became like a game of like, how can I capture this in a way that I find beautiful? And I've been collecting that work for like over a year. And recently I made a little zine, a little, this zine is trash. Um, and I love it. It's like a fun body of work for me. And again, I feel like that helps like explain my personality. Like this is what I'm doing is I'm finding something and I'm seeing how it can be interesting to me. And I think, I mean, that carries over into my work. It's like, what am I going to, like, what are you going to give me? And how am I going to find something that I, like, how am I going to make this interesting? Hopefully not just to me, but to others as well. Um, and for my gratitude, I, not, not because she's in front of me, but I would have to say Kelly, like Kelly was the person that interviewed me, the person that accepted me. Um, and I, again, felt so comfortable with her and she was always encouraging, like reach out and I would reach out after the program. Um, and I haven't since cause Kelly's a busy cow, but I'm so, I was so happy when she reached out, you know, to be part of this, like, that's a huge compliment for me. Um, so Kelly has been massive in the experience and the growth and letting us feel welcome and, um, all of that. And then the second person I'll mention who I've mentioned several times is Janelle. So Janelle is somebody who was also in the program with me has become one of my closest friends. And we like talk about everything like life and work. And so having that person is so massive to like go through 
life with. I feel like throughout the program, we've been at sub a similar levels. And so we've been put up to the same jobs together, you know, all of that stuff. And so I'm eternally and like, will always be grateful for both of those ladies. Thank you for saving me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was that filling enough time? the silence while my brain processed <laughs> what was being asked of me. <laughs> I um, those. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm Nicole Morrison. I'm a San Francisco Bay Area based photographer. I make colorful and graphic images and gifts. I like to make images that look like a sunny day. Um, that's my little elevator pitch. But I do tend towards colorful, cheerful. If I can have a sense of humor, make it wacky, make it weird. I love that. I think that there's something really interesting. Um, you know, my background, my, my degree is in photojournalism. And so I learned photography by being thrown into a situation and making the best of it. And, you know, I graduated while all these newspaper photographers and magazine photographers were being fired. And I, never really even knew how to be a freelancer. And then I ended up doing weddings, which you're thrown into a situation and you make the best of it. And you're not always set up for success. Maybe you're outside at noon in June photographing people and you want to make them look beautiful. And that's brutal sometimes. Um, so I think, you know, through all of that experience, I felt like I was good at the job. I'm a good people person. I'm good under pressure what led me to doing what I'm doing now and what inspired me to do what I'm doing now is a real lack of control. And I felt like the work that I was making, there was only so much I could do for it to look like I made it because I was just constantly having to do whatever was put in front of me. Um, and so I started doing a bunch of stuff on my own using as much color as possible you know, no white, no pastels. Like I want color. I want something that's funny and maybe jarring. I also photographed trash. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> photographed compost. That was one of my first tests that I did by myself was, um, you know, I, I wanted to do a post for, you know, compost awareness week. And it was, you know, early pandemic. And I thought, okay, well, I have been watching a lot of reality TV. I would love to just make something and communicate something. And, you know, people have all this time and to be receptive to new ideas. Let me talk about composting and how easy it is. Um, and so that's what I'm inspired by. I love food. Um, you know, I, food waste and climate change literally keep me up at night. So, you know, I'm inspired by all of that. And I think there's something really interesting about getting people's attention with something that is like colorful or funny or whatever. I think that like getting people's attention and their openness is a really interesting way to communicate with people. So I would say that's what really inspires me is like, what am I going to communicate and how? And like, what, what does that mean in this situation? What world can I build around it? Because I really love when I don't have to be responsible to reality or when I can play with something that's like, this is reality plus, you know, um, whether that be like color blocking or this is just like a very aesthetic um, curated reality that feels accessible, but also exciting. This is, this is all the kind of stuff that I love is like, can we be a little weird? How far are you willing to go with me? <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm happy to answer the gratitude. Uh, I'm very grateful to my community. I definitely do not do anything on my own, um, whether it's my husband and my nanny um, helping me through life and my team with running apostrophe and managing the mentorship program and the artists that I represent. We are so blessed to have a roster of really caring people that understand that the work we do on AMP is good for the industry and that they really support it as well. If we didn't have that in our roster, I think it would be much more, much more difficult. Um, so I'm just always so thankful for the community of people that 
I surround myself with and feel really very blessed and very blessed to do this as a living and have amazing artists like Nicole and Yasara enter my life and inspire me that I get to learn from every day. I feel really, really lucky to have the job that I have um, and the life that I have because of it. So I just feel very blessed, very, very blessed for that. And gratitude, very much gratitude to Kelly for this large undertaking and for continuing to be committed to it. Like you might think that she would set this up and let everyone else run it, but she was there for every single one of our classes. And Kelly continues to think of me for things like she was just mentioning, if anything comes up and I think of one of the mentees, I throw their name out, she does. Um, you know, it, this opportunity just continues to give. And I'm super grateful for that. And also grateful for my mentor, who is Julia, who is like, I literally, every time I speak with her, I'm like, the energy you have, <laughs> is, like, it's so, I call her the energizer bunny every time she's like, you know, talking and she's like, you must think I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, I think that you are the energizer bunny. I think that like you have a tremendous amount of energy and I am just glad to be able to just, you know, be, be able to communicate with you and, and like breathe it in and take that and like go do something with it. Yeah. I would say for all future mentees out there that might be listening, like the program really is what you put into it and the community that you build from it. So I'm hopeful that if anybody's been thinking of applying our, we are about to launch session four, but we'll be back um, next January with more applications open for session five. And I did have one final question. Um, this came in from uh, one of our attendees and um, does anybody, and I don't actually know the answer to this. Does anybody know if there's a program like this for LGBTQ plus photographers? Not that I am aware of. Um, I don't know one of either. Either. Don't. Okay, folks. That's the call. Great question. That's, that's the call. call. Um, <laughs> part of the work that we do at the diversity committee um, is to clear the roadblocks for not only BIPOC folks, but LGBTQIA plus members. Um, we also focus on disability oriented folks and um, try to have conversations around the ways we can all be more sensitive, the things we should be aware of, the ways we can help out folks in our communities, and just being aware that we're all trying to um, we're all trying to get by and have a great career and a great life and a community that loves us and supports us. So if anybody has an answer for us, um, please, you know, send a note over to APA and uh, we'd love to get that, get that answered for folks. Yes. And we are also trying to figure out how we launch something within our social media space to help bring some of the education that we give during AMP program out to the the broader the broader community um as well so please know you know apostrophe is trying to figure out how we can open the gates more and and get that information out there and in, in a way that is as thoughtful as we want it to be presented to people and um and i'll also tag on to that that um for anybody that's not already a member of APA um i have found APA just in my few years to be a wonderful resource i have found um members of the queer community that i can call on to be part of my community um i found all kinds of great information there are seminars there's groups there's committees there are there's our connected community there are a lot of resources and membership does start for as little as $50 a month, or I'm sorry, $50 a year, not $50 a month, $50 a year, folks. Um, and so there are some, some ways you can get plugged in if, um, if you're looking for community and folks to reach out to in whatever, whatever state you're living in. So that's also an option for folks out there. And on that note, ladies, I think we've come to a close. Thank you so, so, so much. It's been such a pleasure um, to get to know each of you more and learn about your stories. And um, hopefully we'll be 
in the next year having a, having another recap session on on the next se session of AMP. Sounds great. Thanks Beautiful. so much. Thanks, Thanks so guys. This is fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, we're at a close. Thanks everybody. <laughs> everyone. Bye everyone.